Thanks for joining us today at Lagarde Products. Our epoxy kits are also really good for resurfacing tables or desks. We used kit number one for this custom dining table. Check out the process right here. So I'm getting ready to do the primer. This is a, a dining table uh, one of our buddies built. They just had a baby, so they're really wanting to get this back. So I'm trying to get it done for him. Um, so he built this out of wood. Real simple process. You got a sheet of MDF, three quarter MDF. And then he did, I think two by fours sideways underneath there for the thick edge. That way he can screw his uh, legs under there. They, they bought some cheap legs, they spray painted it. This is gonna look really cool. So it's awesome. Built it out of wood and now we're gonna coat it and make it look like marble. So I'm doing my white, our white primer. We got it mixed up. And if you're doing large amounts, obviously it's a good idea to just use a roller tray. You'll have more control. This is small, I do it a lot. So I'm just gonna dump out a pile and start spreading this out. And since we're going over such a, a dark color, we might need to do two coats of primer. Like if you're trying to go over black, a black counter and make it white you're going to need to do two coats of primer and the the most critical part is your your faces and edges you really want those nice bright and white backsplash the same thing the top's not as critical because it goes on a lot thicker there so i just spread it out So we put some blowers on this, dried the primer real quick, and it's gonna obviously dry faster if it's got something to absorb into, like wood versus Formica, where it's not really a porous surface. Um, but I wanna point out, all these darker marks are where uh, he did his Bondo. So he Bondoed all the screw holes, and then also, if you look on this edge, he Bondoed that seam. You gotta make sure all your seams are filled and there's no gaps. And then what we did is we sanded this down, we routered the top edge so it's rounded, that way the material will flow over nice and easy. Um, and now I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do the second coat and you'll see how much better the second coat, how much uh, wider this, this table is gonna get with another coat. So that's it, that's how you prime a, dark, a darker surface with white primer. Okay, so it's time to do the epoxy. I have my pigmented white epoxy mixed up right here. I'm gonna hit the whole board, roll it out, roll my edges. It's gonna start dripping, so I'm really have to watch my, my feet because this is overhanging the counter. I really don't wanna get all over my feet. So just keep that in mind when you're doing stuff like this on a table. I've already de-shedded the roller and I have my highlights pre-measured out over here. So all I gotta do is pour my hardener into that, mix it, and the highlights are ready to go. So we're gonna just pour two beads down. We'll do one on this end. One on this end. Get one down the middle. And then now that I got a lot of product out, I'll just go around and hit it on my edges. Not, you know, right on the edge where it's rolling off, but a little closer, that way I'm not fighting to move this product over. And if we get it running over the edge, just push it back a little. Okay, now again, we've, we've already leveled the table. Gotta make sure these are level. Uh, most counters are. I don't think we ever ran into an issue with the counter not being level. But whenever you're doing stuff off-site, always make sure it's level like this. So I'm just spreading this out. And 
now once once these edges are all coated the product will flow over evenly and we won't have to really touch these edges to make them look good at all it'll just flow over and, and look like we cut it out of something okay so now we'll let that kind of level out I'm gonna mix up my highlights and we're doing silver and again I've already pre-measured this and this is our silver metallic so we got a, a pigmented white base and then we're doing silver metallics in it Okay, so they, they wanted like longer, straighter veins. So instead of squeegeeing this and, or instead of swirling this with our roller, I'm gonna use a, a squeegee and I'm just gonna kind of flatten this off in all different directions, kind of following the vein pattern. Um, and it's not gonna blend those veins as much and they'll be more dominant of how we poured them out. So the more random, the better. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna go on my edges and kind of put a little product everywhere in between. Just kind of up on the edge, that way we can get some of these edges looking like the top. And I'm also gonna add a little extra everywhere that these run over the edge. That way we get color on all our edges. So that's about all I'm gonna put on there. You can see I mixed six ounces. We use two ounces. We use two ounces of material for all this. So highlights go a long ways. Darker highlights go a long way in white colors. So now I'm just gonna start flattening this off. Kind of just some ra random ways, kind of following the veins. Gonna give it a once this levels out and the colors kind of pop back, it's gonna give it a really unique look. And I also want to add patterns out here in the middle. See, I was leaving a little bit of that silver out there, highlights different hues of it. That's what we're kind of after. Notice how it doesn't really smear the color everywhere. It's more of a, a, a light blend, and that's kind of the look that we're going for. That's cool, because if, if, if I wanted to add some more color, I could totally do that right now, but I think I like, like how it is. It looks really good. I might add just a little bit right here, just because it is kind of bare right through here. So I'll just add a little, little teeny vein coming up and then I'll just blend that in. A little dab will do ya, you know? Kind of blend that in, that'll help. Help make this kind of flow, everything flow together. Now, I'm gonna just randomly flatten off my edges. Not really trying to push the product off, just trying to blend it. And notice how we don't really have any color here. I'll just get a little silver on the on the squeegee and just kind of blend that in but see that's kind of what we're after once it's all coated the top to kind of flow over go down that's going to be a a really nice looking edge and the cool part about the edges is you can always come back and mess with those after it's starting to set up a little 
because we'll have we'll have color on the floor of the plastic I can use to add some color on the top so that's pretty much it guys we'll let, I'll let this sit for a little level out start flowing over the edges and then we'll come back and I'll show you some some stuff we can do to the edges if if we need to I'm not sure if we will so we'll kind of see how that plays out okay so what I'm doing now you can see we got some spots where it didn't really cover all the way I'm gonna fill those in flatten them off and then I'm gonna go around and look I've already rolled the bottom of this um, while it was had some drips and stuff I rolled the bottom that way when you grab the table it feels like it's coated underneath so I kind of roll the epoxy under there too and now I'm just going around the edges and I think right here it's kind of bare there's no 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 silver color so I'm just gonna get a little on the brush and just kind of add some kind of just just randomly and then we're just gonna kind of blend that in just so we can get some color over here too that way it doesn't look completely white but look at this isn't this cool we got the top running all the way down the edge looks like it was cut out of a, a slab and this is why your edges are so critical when you're prepping them you don't want to fill a seam or anything that's why you can kind of still see the line it didn't get filled uh, all the way and then we have like a little nail hole here you got to really take your time make sure you fill all those because if those were filled good it would look just like the top you wouldn't be able to see an edge or nothing but other than that, we really don't have to touch these. I mean, all these edges are looking great. It's just float over awesome. All right, guys, table turned out absolutely amazing. Just what they wanted. They wanted longer veins that didn't get blended as much. Um, and that's the difference from swirling with the roller or using the squeegee, right? So it looks, it looks more natural. Um, so now, before we add our top coat, I wanted, I'm taking 220 grit and I'm running my hand across it and if I feel any bumps, I'm just gonna lightly spot hit those. I'm not really worried about these little specks of dust that got in it, cause they're not sticking up. Anything that's sticking up, I'm just gonna lightly spot hit it, knock it down. That's pretty much it. And since this is a white counter, it's better to use the gray pads. Uh, Home Depot sells the red pads. You don't really wanna uh, sand with a red pad on white. So what we're gonna do on this is our new urethane, our new matte urethane. So I sat, soaked the roller, do it just how we always do top coats, roll down the middle a little, and then I'm gonna cross roll it. And notice I'm only going a, like two feet at a time. Really roll this out good, make sure everything's coated. project to do. Our kids can transform any surface. Be sure to check out these other videos to see other awesome projects. Subscribe, comment, let us know what y'all think. See you soon.